Hello, we're here at the Brighton Implant Clinic and I'm delighted to talk to Dr. Bruno Silva today. Um, he's going to talk to us about dental implants and he is the founder of the Brighton Implant Clinic. So we all know how scary it can be, the prospect of having a dental implant. But if you've ever had any questions, worries, fears, cast all these aside because Dr. Silva is here to answer all your questions. Hello, Dr. Silva. Okay. Hi. So the Brighton Implant Clinic has got an excellent reputation, but tell us what sets it apart from dental practices? Thank you. Uh, well, as our name implies, we're uh, principally an implant clinic. Uh, we do provide all types of dentistry, all uh, aspects of dentistry, but our main focus is on dental implant treatment. So um, all of the dentists that work here have experience and uh, additional training over and above uh, that we receive at dental school and uh, for that reason because we're only focusing on dental implant treatment we've actually gained and continue to improve our experience and understanding of this aspect of dentistry. For the last six years I myself have been exclusively working just with dental implants mm -hmm. and um, you know I'm pleased to say that over that period of time that uh, our experience and our knowledge of this treatment actually continues to improve over time. I'm sure it must be a very finite procedure. So for those of us that really don't know anything about how, uh, how the procedure happens, what is a dental implant? Can you just explain what, what a patient could expect from A, deciding that they're going to have a dental implant? You know, that's quite a big thought anyway. Yeah. To actually book in the reservation, to the, the, the appointment with you. And then what, 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 what happens after that? Usually your dentist will be uh, explaining that there is uh, no further conventional dental treatment that can prolong the lifespan of the tooth and a dental implant is recommended. So a dental implant is uh, like a titanium screw and it's basically mm -hmm. uh, the shape. The dental implant is uh, a small titanium screw. How small would that be? It you... can be from this like five or six millimeters um, in terms of length and three and a half millimeters in terms of width. So they can be quite small and they vary in terms of uh, widths and lengths depending on the indication. So uh, <clears throat> once it's understood that the implant is recommended, then an appointment is made. All of our dentists are uh, highly experienced with dental implant treatment. The most important and critical phase of the treatment process is actually understanding that the correct treatment is, um, is going to be appropriate and all the options and advantages and disadvantages of the treatments are discussed in detail. Yes. So uh, usually we recommend or we offer a free uh, uh, initial appointment. It's usually an hour's uh, length, it can be longer if needed, and the, the process is explained in detail with each patient. Yes, I'm sure it's, a, it's very reassuring to you to hear your words. But I also wonder, is it painful or do we not know? Is it painful after the operation? Sure, it's, 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 uh, obviously there are many different types of procedures, ranging from just a single tooth to multiple teeth to a full arch of teeth, so that can vary. Uh, obviously the bigger procedures can be more uncomfortable than the small procedures, and actually that's uh, something to be expected. But um, in comparison to the other types of dentistry, it's actually surprisingly uh, not as painful as one would imagine. How come? So, um, if, I can, if we compare it to, for example, having a root treatment or having tooth removed, um, we can say with quite a high degree of certainty that having an implant is less painful than having a tooth removed or having a root treatment. Uh, many patients, uh, I would say probably the majority of patients, after having treatment, and we're, we're referring to a, a very large number of patients that we treat, this is um, Patients routinely tell us that they have to take no painkillers afterwards. Oh, and that's so excellent. Been able to resume you know, normal function and go back to work on the same day or the day after having a treatment. So. And I just wondered because so many patients like myself are petrified of the drill or having anything like that actually going into their, their bone. Do you have like any reassuring, calming techniques, any music in order to 
tranqu tranquilize, not but you know, pacify a patient who may be petrified of the procedure? So, well, music comes as standard. Music comes as standard. In, 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 the, in, the, in the clinic, um, it's certainly there are two main uh, options. First is uh, treatment under local anesthetic, uh, which has its advantages. It's uh, quite uh, quick onset. Patients don't feel any discomfort and patients can uh, drive or uh, resume the normal day afterwards. Okay. Uh, and I'm comparing this to the alternative, which is being sedated. And mm -hmm. with sedation, it's really recommended for patients who are more nervous and more anxious about having any treatment. Um, I'm not ashamed to say I myself, I'd be you know, quite happy to be sedated to have an implant because I prefer not to be conscious of the treatment being carried out. But I'm definitely with you on that. <laughs> uh, so with, with sedation, the treatment um, is carried out while the patient's you know, asleep. Mm -hmm. And the, the advantage of having, uh, of having this, this, this advantage of having sedation is that um, you know, usually patients wake up uh, once the procedure is finished. Mm -hmm. So it actually is very uh, stressless or it's, very, it's much easier for the patient to cope. Mm -hmm. um, the main, main objective, the main issue here is that if you're being sedated, you need to be accompanied with somebody. Yes. And, uh, but yeah, we, 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 we treat, I would say, a probably 50 50 share mm -hmm. between patients that are prefer to be awake and okay. patients that are sedated. So if I wanted to have uh, a dental implant or fixed teeth, I think we spoke about, mm -hmm. on the same day, is that possible with a consultation, photographs? That first appointment, usually, it's a fact-finding uh, time for the dentist. We're taking photographs um, of different aspects of the mouth, the existing teeth, the problem teeth, and um, also checking for other things, for example, like tooth decay, uh, oral cancers, mm -hmm. any uh, deficiencies that we can see that are evident in the mouth, and we're giving advice on not only implants but on patients. Uh, because essentially, it's it's something that's you know connected. It's not just an implant that we're focusing on. Mm -hmm. So everything's connected, and uh, with the help of X-rays and CD scans, we can basically see uh, a full 3D image or a full 3D global picture of what's going on mm -hmm. in the patient's mouth. So the majority of our patients are um, under the care of a regular dentist and they choose to come and see us because they feel more comfortable being treated by uh, a clinic that's basically uh, completely geared towards dental implant treatment. And would there be any cases, for example, that one couldn't have a dental implant if the, there wasn't enough bone or could you tell me a little bit more about, would there be an option perhaps if the dental implant couldn't be fixed? Is there indeed, another procedure? Indeed. indeed. Um, whilst dental implants are suitable for many patients, there are a small number of patients where dental implants aren't suitable. Mm -hmm. This could be like health reasons, it could be because there is uh, limited amounts of bone available for implant treatment to be placed. And also because the dentist who's going to provide the treatment may feel uh, that the patient's unsuitable for having dental implants because dental implants do require certain amounts of maintenance and care and we have to take a better judgment if we feel that dental implant treatment is not going to be suitable long term for that patient then that's also a reason why we would uh, maybe not recommend an implant. So the concept of, the concept of a same day treatment, essentially what's changed is that uh, in the 20-30 years that implants have been available they've improved in terms of the design and characteristics. And one of the most interesting aspects of the design improvements is that an implant uh, today can be placed. Obviously, the case needs to be suitable uh, for this procedure, but an implant can be placed. And the implant being the screw part mm -hmm. um, of, the, of, the, of the whole restoration, that one can actually have a tooth that is secured onto the implant on the same day. So the way this is carried out is that the implant itself, it's uh, positioned carefully into the jawbone and we need to assess and check that once the implant's placed that it is actually stable and strong enough to support the tooth. And if that's the case, then we're able to do what's called a same day tooth or same day teeth, that we can actually put a fixed tooth 
onto the implant on the same day. Ah, oh, that's amazing. Very, yeah, very efficient. It's, it's really, it's really, really uh, convenient. Uh, patients are, you know, obviously in preference to having a tooth on the same day. Yes. Because if we were to, for example, take the uh, an example of a front tooth, if you imagine you have some kind of trauma, you lost the front tooth, mm -hmm. you'd want to try and get the replacement tooth as soon as, as, soon as possible. possible for work related issues and obviously being in public. So you'd have you'd be faced with two options really. You'd be faced with a removable tooth, mm -hmm. or actually three options: a gap, which is not really an option. The second option would be a removable tooth, which can be quite difficult to maintain. When you say a removable tooth, like, you re one removes like, it after a period of time. Or? No, it's actually a removable tooth, like a denture, like a removable plate. Oh. So this is obviously a little bit more because it's something that, that moves. A fake tooth. A fake tooth mm -hmm. moved during uh, eating or speaking. Mm -hmm. So uh, not the best uh, solution for a single missing tooth. Mm -hmm. And then the third option would be to actually have a fixed tooth. Mm -hmm. So where possible, once the implant is placed, we would assess to see how stable and how secure that implant is. And if it were stable, then a fixed tooth could be uh, secured to the implant straight away. So the advantage of this is that it is something that's more comfortable. It's uh, a lot easier for the patient to cope with and to speak, function, yes. eat with. And uh, it looks just like you know, a natural tooth would. So obviously there are some, some, some considerations that need to be taken into, into account because it is on an implant that's not fully healed. Yes. So you know, one would need to be careful not to put excessive pressure and not to put... Um, you know, hard biting forces onto this tooth until it was confirmed with the dentist that it had fully integrated and then it could be treated just like a normal tooth. So the patient can go away with a list of do's and do nots Absolutely. in order to Absolutely. care and maintain their tooth? With all the procedures that we, that we carry out, we have you know, follow-up instructions mm -hmm. of what to do and what to avoid. Mm -hmm. So but the main issue is with same-day teeth, one is able to you know, come in with a gap or a tooth missing with a problem tooth, and uh, they can leave the tooth in the same day. And a smile. And a smile. <laughs> so Dr. Silva, I understand there's a technique which you perform here called the all on four. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Who's it for? What happens? Sure. Well, the all on four treatment is actually a, a very interesting concept. Uh, it's been around for about uh, 12, 13 years. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pioneered by a dentist in Portugal called Dr. Paolo Mado. And uh, essentially, it's replacing a full uh, arch or jaw of missing teeth or problem teeth uh, with a fixed bridge Ooh. that supports on four implants. So, uh, unlike what many patients um, who are missing multiple teeth, uh, they feel that they need to have an implant for every missing tooth that they have. Um, but because the implants are different to natural teeth, mm -hmm. uh, when they're integrated, they're actually stronger than natural teeth roots. It's been proven um, with many, many uh, uh, clinical case studies and also in our own experience that uh, to replace uh, a full arch of teeth, you need a minimum of four uh, suitable sized implants uh, placed into the upper and lower jaw. So are they divided into quarters within the mouth? It's not. So we, we, we're, finding, we're obviously carrying out a detailed analysis assessment and the start, very important phase, making sure that the patient has adequate amounts of bone. Yes. And then the four implants are basically positioned carefully, the back implants at an angle, um, which can vary from patient to patient, and then uh, the anterior implants um, in the patient's uh, own bone. So when compared to other different types, uh, when compared to other types of treatment, usually um, we're not needing to graft any uh, artificial bone for patients that have limited amounts of bone. So the main advantages for the all-on-4 is you're using the, your own bone. If we compare the all-on-4 to conventional or traditional treatment options, usually this would involve longer uh, periods of time of healing um, and usually a greater number of implants, but usually more than four. So okay. it's not so much the number of implants that there's an issue with, but when we look at especially the upper jaw, 
we have areas in the mouth, usually the back areas of our mouth, where mm -hmm. we have limited amounts of bone. Mm -hmm. So traditionally, we'd have to graft and add artificial bone. And this process, it's an, egg, an additional or extra procedure. Yes. It, uh, it can be painful. It takes more time to heal. And it prolongs the treatment and the experience for the patient with our teeth, which is we're trying to work towards minimizing the discomfort and the disruption to their, to their lives of being with our teeth. Yes. So with the Ormond 4, we're going away from grafting, so we're trying to use the patient's own bone, mm -hmm. and we do that by inclining or uh, changing the positions of implants. So instead of the implants being all vertically orientated, they're actually placed at an angle. And this actually increases their, their, their stability and their ability to actually support fixed teeth. It sounds like quite a big operation stroke procedure. Is it? Is it time it is, consuming? It, it is indeed. The, the, the procedure itself, it is considered something not within the realms of general dentistry. Mm -hmm. um, in our practice, it's something that we uh, carry out uh, on a routine basis. Uh, but yes, it is a more complex procedure than having a single tooth implant or you know, treatment that falls within general dentistry. But you know, because we're an implant clinic and patients come to see us, uh, many patients, I'd probably say you know, possibly more than 50% of our patients come and see us for uh, similar treatments like the Ormond 4. So because we carry out the procedure frequently, we've perfected and improved on our technique and our protocol. So it's something that we can carry out with a high degree of confidence. Yes. Because you know, we've, we've seen and understood the complications and the problems that can arise from treatment. Yes. Because I'd be lying to you if I said to you that you, know, you don't learn from your mistakes and you don't learn from procedures that need to be improved on. And so every patient's it's a, it's different. It's a constant uh, drive towards trying to reduce patient pain, trying to improve the time that it takes to actually deliver mm -hmm. what the patient wants mm -hmm. um, with the least amount of inconvenience and discomfort to the patient. That's very reassuring. The, the all on four, is this for any ages or is there a, is there a, is there a limit? Can, could it be for children if, for example, they have had a trauma or an accident? Is that suitable or is it from a, a later age in life? Well, uh, Kerry, from, from experience, we've seen that um, it's suitable for uh, any age of patient um, that requires a replacement of a full arch of teeth. Mm -hmm. And in our clinic, we've treated patients from um, their mid-twenties who either have had um, you know, various different problems of why the teeth on four is suitable for those patients that are requiring uh, an ar a full arch or multiple missing teeth to be replaced. Mm -hmm. So we've treated patients in their mid-20s. Uh, in some cases, we have patients who are actually born without teeth, but aren't you? And uh, it's worked very, very well. And um, the treatment has been also carried out in patients in their late 80s. Our uh, oldest patient actually was 92 years old that we treated in upper jaw. And uh, the treatment is successful. It's not really yeah. dependent on age. And it's more a question of whether it's the right option for that particular person. Sure. And also if they have adequate amounts of bone. And there's a, a checklist that we need to ensure that mm -hmm. it's going to be the right, the right, uh, the right solution for that person. Age, I, is, age is not a contraindicator, mm -hmm. I, can, I can say. So for those patients that, due to whatever contributing factors, cannot have teeth on four, is there an option? Sure. The, uh, one of the main reasons why patients are unable to have the conventional teeth on four um, solution is basically because they may have a lack of bone. Um, this is more common in the upper jaw. Uh, usually the upper jaw is more complex and carries a greater risk of uh, implant failure. Mm -hmm. um, when, before we start the treatment, we need to assess if the patients have enough bone. If we find that patients don't have adequate amounts of a bone thickness or bone volume for a conventional teeth on four, then there is the alternative of what's called zygomatic implants. Oh. Okay. Uh, zygomatic implants, they differ from conventional implants because they're actually 
anchored into the zygomatic bone. Which is? It's actually your cheekbone. Oh, really? Uh, it's a bone that actually has a different, uh, you know, a different consistency mm -hmm. and a different amount of uh, bone available for implants to be placed. So this would be for a full set of teeth indeed, from indeed. the zygomatic indeed. So, procedure? Uh, from from, from, in, from uh, the patient's perspective, uh, what they see in their mouth looks just like a conventional uh, form of uh, teeth. Sorry. From a patient's perspective, it looks just like a conventional teeth on four uh, implant treatment, but uh, the implants are actually secured in the zygomatic bone, which is actually outside the mouth. So, so that's a lot more secure, I can imagine. It's very secure, it's mm. true, because the, the zygomatic bone, it actually is derived from the same origin as the lower jaw. So the bone consistency and the bone density is much uh, higher and much better, mm -hmm. usually than the posterior or the back areas of the upper jaw. So those are the, the difficult areas that we have to actually uh, place implants. So zygomatic bones offers those patients that many of them have been told by mm -hmm. their dentists that they don't have adequate amounts of bone for implants and they fear having to use a denture for the rest of their lives. Zygomatic implants is is a solution that can help. Is it, is it quite a new solution then, the well, zygomatic? Uh, interesting that you should say that because my mom has zygomatic implants. She was one of the first cases. How old is your mom? Can I ask? Uh, she's uh, 72 years old. Is she happy? Uh, she's very happy. She had the implants placed in uh, when she was 57 years old. Mm -hmm. So uh, this was uh, carried out when I was still studying to be a dentist. And the treatment's been you know, fantastically successful. Uh, she had a denture for 35 years. Yes. And uh, you know, were it not for zygomatic implants, she probably wouldn't be able to have fixed teeth today. Mm -hmm. And probably I wouldn't be a dentist today if it wasn't for zygomatic implants. It's really an inspiration to see the changes that it had in my mom's, you know, my mom's, you know, quality of life. Oh, that's so, wonderful. Yeah, it is. It, it is a more complex procedure. Mm -hmm. It's not something that's, um, you know, uh, performed by all implant uh, dentists. It is a procedure that carries a uh, greater level of training. There are greater risks and uh, obviously those all need to be discussed and assessed between the dentist, the surgeon, the patient Yes. to make sure that it's again the right solution. I have to ask you Dr. Silva, with regards to all these procedures, are they expensive? Are they costly? Or do you have set prices for each? <coughs> operation, well, each procedure? That's a very good question. Right from the start, when we, when we opened the clinic, we wanted to make implant treatment as simple and as straightforward for patients to understand. So looking at it not from a dentist's point of view, but actually from a patient's point of view, we wanted to give it the, um, to simplify things. So we have set prices for single tooth dental implants. We have set prices for teeth on four solutions mm -hmm. and set prices for zygomatic implant solutions. And whilst some cases are no doubt more difficult than others, um, we do a set price which at least facilitates the, the understanding for patients as to the costs that are involved. So yeah. if the treatment is possible, then we know that the costs are going to be A, set out in black and white before the treatment starts. Okay. But there are set prices for for everybody. Can, can the patients do this on a plan? Can they pay Absolutely, monthly? Yeah. Is that Absolutely, possible? Yeah. So uh, once the treatment plan is agreed and patients want to go ahead with their treatment, yeah. then you know, finance options can be discussed and this can, we can, finance options can be uh, discussed and arranged between the patient and uh, our accounts department. Can I ask you, being a very fussy female, if I didn't like my dental implant, what happens then? It's a very good question. It's a very good question. So, wherever possible, we always try to have a provisional uh, tooth. If you're looking at a single tooth implant, or if you're looking at multiple teeth, for example, a bridge, we we'll always have a provisional bridge. So, if I explain the two, uh, the two variants, so if you were to have a single tooth, for example, if it were your front tooth, it's very possible, and actually, it's more common then one would think that uh, the tooth that we provide at the start of treatment, patients may want to make some adjustments to it. Because making a tooth is an art form for our dental technicians. We have 
our own dental laboratory with very skilled technicians. But um, you finish having your dental implant, and the first tooth that you're going to get on the, on the day of treatment, if the implant is suitably strong, is a temporary tooth. So that temporary tooth is made out of a composite resin, and for all intents and purposes, it looks just like a natural tooth. Okay. But there are cases, and there are times when patients may come back after a month or two, and they say, I like the tooth, but would it be a little bit longer, or could it be a little bit shorter, or could it be a little bit more rounded on the edges? Could I change the colour, for change example? The, color, the shape, it feels too thin, it feels too bulky. It just feels wrong? It can feel wrong, <laughs> absolutely. So we use that temporary tooth as a prototype. Okay. And we basically, we work from that. So if we see that the patient uh, has uh, any problems with that, then we can basically work from that together with the dental technician. Sure. We can uh, make another temporary tooth that we think will satisfy the patient's expectation. Okay. And then once we actually get to the stage where we see the patient satisfied, we're satisfied, then we can take that information and I'm happy to say that before we would actually try to replicate that um, in the permanent tooth, but actually as of about six months ago, we've actually got a, uh, a scanner uh, that can actually scan a tooth and we can actually produce a 100% replica of that temporary tooth. So Fascinating. it's not left to uh, a human hand to replicate, it's actually milled and manufactured exactly to you know, a fraction of a millimetre in terms of accuracy. And so, what's it made of, did you say? Uh, the, the, the material that we use mostly is zirconia. So zirconia is a very hard material. It's extremely hard. It's uh, harder than, than conventional metals that we're using uh, traditionally. And it has excellent aesthetic properties. It's got no dark metal shadows. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, very biocompatible. The gum tissues are very comfortable around it. And it looks and functions fantastically well. In terms of complications that may arise, of course every patient's different, but would you explain just a few complications that may happen and how would you conquer them just to reassure people sure. that would worry about that sort of thing? Sure, uh, our implants are absolutely fantastic. I love, I love what I do and we do many implants. It would be uh, not dishonest, but it would be foolish for me to say that uh, there are no inherent problems that come mm. with having dental implants. And it's very important that patients are, are watching this video understand that there is a degree of responsibility that lies with the patient to look after teeth. I'm afraid that many patients that come to see us, unfortunately they come to see us because they've lost teeth as a result of, it can be trauma, it can be because they were born without teeth. But in many cases, it's because either gum disease, um, tooth decay. Hygiene. There's hygiene. There's an element that something hasn't been uh, maintained and for that reason we've lost the tooth. Yes. So we need to make sure that that, that habit or that, um, that environment needs to improve. Otherwise we're going to have problems afterwards. And reoccurring problems at that. Problems, absolutely. Yes. Because uh, to say that an implant's going to last a lifetime, it, it does in many cases. And we hope that it's going to last um, a lifetime, but you know, if patients don't look after um, an implant, then there's the risk of an implant failing can be quite high. There obviously is some, some responsibility from the dentist's point of view. There can be complications that arise uh, during surgery, so even if patients look after it, that yeah. an implant can fail for no of course. patient's fault. It's mm. not, you know, we're not trying to paint a picture that implants that fail are only the patient's uh, fault or responsibility but generally uh, once the surgical kind of uh, healing phase which mm -hmm. is usually about four months mm -hmm. once that's passed um, it's really really important that patients understand that implants they're just like natural teeth mm -hmm. in some cases even can be a little bit more sensitive to gum disease mm -hmm. uh, than natural teeth are and they need to be looked after so, with regards to sensitivity, is that heightened or...? No, no, there's no sensitivity. There's no, there's, there's nothing... No cold, I mean, that's an advantage. It's, that is, uh, ice cream. You can, <laughs> you can have any sensitivity. Um, so, uh, from that point of view, but it's the hygiene plays an important role and also um, a good relationship with the practice or with the surgeon yes. that actually has completed that treatment because it's important to 
if there is any issues that are um, progressing or becoming worse with the yeah. implant treatment, it needs to be monitored. So having an implant and never going back to the practice where that was carried out is not recommended. It's that's not it, maintenance. It, 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 it's it, it needs to be either maintained by the practice that mm. provided the implant or the dentist that referred the patient yeah. to make sure that the implant really is functioning as it should be and that we're not um, yeah. losing bone around the implant. So brushing carefully, flossing regularly, mouthwash, taking care of your choice Absolutely. of toothpaste, Absolutely. all these are Absolutely. really important, Absolutely. they're the basis. Absolutely, and seeing a hygienist, you know, again, lots of patients, many patients will have uh, you know, multiple crowns and bridges, and there are some areas that can be quite inaccessible mm. for cleaning, so with brushing or flossing, it can be quite difficult yeah. to get into some, some areas, so seeing a hygienist, we recommend at least once every six months is really, really very much recommended. Yeah. Dr. Silver, do you recommend a electric toothbrush or a regular handheld well, brush I'm, for the implants and the sure. teeth on fall? Sure. Um, to be honest, what's important is that the patient understands that you need to spend adequate amounts of time, whether that's with an electric toothbrush or with a manual toothbrush. What's important is a frequency, at least twice a day, mm -hmm. if possible, even three times a day after meals, and when brushing, to spend enough time actually cleaning the teeth. So whether it's with a manual brush, the aim is to brush your teeth for two minutes, and during those two minutes, it's actually quite a long It is, break. I didn't know that. So two I think I'm guilty uh, of less uh, than that. Yeah, you because, you know, <laughs> well, everybody is in, to some degree, because you might be brushing your teeth before going to work, so you think you're brushing for a minute, but actually it's more like maybe 20, 20 or 30 seconds. So, you know, that's critical for, especially for implant health. But I usually tell my patients is, you know, I don't really mind whether it's a manual or electric toothbrush. What's important is once you've finished, to inspect your teeth closely with a mirror in your bathroom and just make sure that you've actually uh, removed what needs to be cleaned. So, so the tartar's uh, gone. The tartar's gone, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, it's worth mentioning that to patients that have uh, teeth on fall, mm -hmm. these bridges they secure to the implants, mm -hmm. and that's part of the treatment we actually give patients uh, a special device called the water jet. And this water jet, it, it's basically like an adjunct to your conventional brushing, and that's to actually uh, jet water underneath the bridge to make sure that it's maintained. Correctly. Ah, that's helpful. So, Dr. Silva, what inspired you to undertake your career in dentistry? I would say probably the biggest inspiration was uh, seeing the effect that uh, implant treatment had on my mom. Mm -hmm. um, I saw the improvement of the quality of life that she had, and it was absolutely nothing about um, titanium screws. It was about uh, replacing you know, her confidence and the dignity of actually having something fixed. Yeah. Um, you know, someone who doesn't have um, teeth doesn't understand the like emotional and psychological effect that not having teeth has. We take our teeth for granted and we only really see the, the, the really understand the true value of our teeth when mm -hmm. we lose them. So fortunately I've not lost my teeth, but um, certainly was a big inspiration to do dentistry. And then once I finished uh, university and was working as a dentist, I found that it was difficult to be good at so many different aspects of dentistry. You know, when in the morning you're treating children mm -hmm. and you know doing fillings on children in the afternoon you're doing the checkup and then you're doing crowns and new treatments. And as I've mentioned before, you can only learn from doing the same procedure over and over and over again, like anything in life, in rep repetition mm -hmm. is going to allow you to perfect your skills and just have a greater understanding. So um, what, what I enjoy most is the, the, how rewarding it can be to see someone who's uh, put so much hope on you to try and restore their, their confidence in having a tooth. There might be a tooth for one patient, it might be complete upper and lower uh, jaw for somebody else. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, for me, it was actually kind of the transformation that you can have. Because it's a very emotional procedure, yeah, yeah, both for yourself, no doubt, as well as the patient. There's some highs and lows. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we're, we're, very, we're very blessed and very fortunate. We have, you know, an amazing scope of patients that come to see us. And we try to do our best 
It's, you know, it's the, the ethos of myself and all my colleagues. We try to do our absolute best for patients that come here um, and who seek help with dental treatment. So. Well, congratulations yeah. on the Brighton Implant Clinic. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thank you Dr. Very Bruno much. Silva. Thank you.